We've all heard the horror stories of people getting their Facebook accounts shut down and being banned. And now, if you want to do everything you can to avoid the dreaded Facebook ban, account shutdown, or having your Facebook account hacked, then you definitely want to avoid these big mistakes. Now, if you use Facebook for business purposes, you should set up Facebook Business Manager. Even if you're not considering Facebook ads right now, you really should get the foundations in place as soon as possible. And if you're getting started with Facebook ads, then this is absolutely essential. Hey, it's me, Hall here from Lead to Launch, where we help course creators and membership site owners build profitable lead generation processes and create purpose-driven paydays through online launches. Now, in this video, you'll discover the three biggest mistakes that people make with Business Manager, how to avoid them, and the steps you should take to get up and running quickly and securely with Facebook Business Manager. Now, if you hang around until the very end, I'll show you how you can unleash the most powerful Facebook Business Manager feature and show you how you can put it to work for you immediately. Right, let's dive straight in. The first thing that we need to do is create our Facebook Business Manager account. To do this, we go to business.facebook.com and click on Create Account. Now, you can have up to two Business Manager accounts. The important thing to remember here is that your Business Manager account is linked to your personal Facebook profile. Now, if you're not logged into your Facebook account, you'll be asked to log in here before proceeding to create your Business Manager account. From here, you're then asked to enter your business um, and account name, your name, and your business name. Once you click submit, a verification email will be sent to you, which you will give you full access to your account. Okay, so here we have the simple part done. Your business manager is now set up, but this brings me to the first big mistake that people make with Facebook Business Manager, and that is they don't understand the purpose of Facebook Business Manager and how it works. Now, above all else, I think this causes more problems than anything else. So let's take a look at this on screen. The best way to think about Facebook Business Manager is like a secure container from which you can connect and manage all your meta assets. So the Facebook Business Manager does very little in its own right, but what it does is it consolidates all your assets and enables you to grant access to team members and contractors in a safe and manageable way. Once we have the container set up, which is the step that we took at the very start of this video, we can then start adding our assets into Business Manager. So we're gonna begin with our Facebook page, our Instagram, and our WhatsApp. In addition, we can then add the Facebook Pixel. Now the Pixel is lets you build custom audiences and tracks the actions that people take on your website. And you can share this data with your ad accounts. Now, if you're only getting started with Facebook ads, the chances are that you'll only need one Facebook ad account. However, if you have different businesses or are promoting significantly different offers to completely different audiences, you can create up to 25 Facebook ad accounts. Finally, and most importantly, you can then add users to your business manager. Now, this is one of the most powerful features of business manager as it allows you to share different levels of access to your meta business assets in a highly secure, visible, and controlled way. So let's switch over to Facebook Business Manager and look at this on screen. Starting off, you're gonna to want to add your Facebook page. So here you have three options. Add a page, this is where you take ownership of a page and move full control into Business Manager. The second option is request access to a page. This is an option if you want to access a page but you don't actually want to take ownership. So this could be if you're you know, a Facebook ad agency looking to run ads on behalf of somebody else. The third option here is to create a new page, which is fairly self-explanatory, but we're gonna take it that you probably have your Facebook page already set up. Now for most people, you'll be selecting an existing page, which will be option one. So simply enter the page name um, or the URL and click add page. Once you do this, the current admin of your Facebook page, which will probably be you, will receive a notification on their personal page, Facebook profile of the request to add the page to Business Manager. Um, and you need to approve that in order to uh, add the page to Business Manager. It's a similar process for Instagram. However, this time you will be asked to log into your Instagram through Business Manager, which will link the two accounts. Now, on a side note, make sure that you've converted your Instagram account to a business account. There's absolutely no downside to it, and you get lost, lots of extra analytics with it. Your Instagram account can only be associated with one Business Manager account. Now, one of the big reasons you want to do this is that when you're advertising on Instagram, you can display the ads as are originating from your Instagram account rather than from your Facebook page. It's more organic and people prefer to see that. Now, if you want to link your WhatsApp account, you first need to convert it to a business account and then you can follow a very similar process to add your WhatsApp account. 
Now, at this stage, most people get really excited and rush into setting up their ad accounts and launching their ads. And this is mistake number two that I see people make. So before you take any additional steps, it's important that you complete the business information section. Now, back on screen, we can see my primary business manager. Make sure that you complete all the required fields and then complete them accurately. So initially, you're not required to verify your business details on Facebook. In fact, for the majority of people, you're not even given an option to do so. You're only required to verify your business if you want to access certain developer features like building apps or games or, you know, for the vast majority of people, this is not an issue. However, it does become an issue if you run into difficulty and get your ad account restricted. And then you may be required to verify your business details and it makes life so much easier if you have done it in advance. Now there's a process to get verified even if you don't have the option uh, on screen to do so and I will show that to you in another video. But for today, make sure you enter your business details accurately as they would appear on your official documentation like your search of registration or incorporation. Okay, so the next big mistake that I see people make is with the security settings. Now, first we have two-factor authentication. So if we go into security center, I would strongly advise you to switch on two-factor authentication for all users of your business manager. Now, this is important because it lets, let's say you add a VA to your account or you have somebody helping you with your social contact. If these people are hacked and they have full access to your business manager, now you are exposed. So forcing them to switch on two-factor authentication will mean that the chances of them getting hacked will be far lower and then you don't have as much risk in terms of your account. Yes, it can still happen, but it will be far less likely. Unfortunately, this also means that you have to switch on two-factor authentication on your personal Facebook profile as you're going to be an admin, but I believe that is in everyone's best interest. So on our personal profile, we go to settings, security, login, two-factor authentication, and then choose our method. We can pick a text message option linked to our mobile, or we can use an authenticator app like Google Authenticator or LastPass. Now, having completed this step, you've dramatically reduced the chances that somebody can hack into your account and you can avoid the pain and hardship of trying to recover your lost Facebook profile, your pages, your groups, your ad account, and your business manager. The next step that we need to take is authorize our domain. Now, to do this, we go to brand safety and domains. To get started, we simply click the add button and enter the domain that we want to verify. We'll be presented with three options to verify, which are add a meta tag to a HTML, HTML source code, upload HTML file to the root of your domain, or update the DNS te uh, TXT record. Now, I recommend going with the DNS uh, record route. If you're unsure how to do this, simply copy the instructions in, from Facebook and send them to your domain host. They should be able to do this quickly and easily for you. But if you keep an eye on the channel, I'll also record a separate video on how you can do that in your own right in the coming weeks. Okay, so they're the three biggest mistakes that I see beginners make when it comes to their setup of their Facebook Business Manager. Now, at the start of this video, I promised you a bonus session on how you can unleash the most powerful Facebook Business Manager feature and show you how you can put it to work for you immediately. And if you bear with me, I'll get right to that. But before I do, let's recap on what we've covered today. So mistake number one is not understanding what Facebook Business Manager is. Look on your business manager as a container to connect and manage all of your meta assets and provide safe and secure assets to other people. Mistake number two is not completing the business info section. Now this becomes vitally important if your ad account runs into difficulty or if you need to verify your account in future. Mistake number three is not fully optimizing the security settings. Turning on two-factor authentication for everybody who has access to your business manager is your top priority. And then you also want to authorize your domain name. This will be important when it comes to setting up your pixel and launching your ads. Now, speaking of which, I don't want to forget about that bonus section. The way that Facebook aggregates data on its users and then allows you to target those people with similar interests is one of the key factors in success of the Facebook platform. Now, one side of this is knowing what people do on the Facebook platform, and Facebook have that fairly well sorted. Some reports suggest that Facebook track up to 55,000 data points um, on a person. But the on-platform tracking is only one side of the data that Facebook accumulates. The other side are the actions that Facebook users takes on third-party website. How does Facebook do that? Well, that's through the Facebook Pixel. So the Facebook Pixel is a small piece of code which enables Facebook to track their users' actions. Now, your Pixel allows you to track and retarget Facebook users on your website 
But as Facebook can aggregate data for millions of websites across the internet, they can act, act, accurately predict the interests and actions that people will take based on their past behaviors. Now, this is hugely beneficial when it comes to advertising, as once Facebook has some data on who interacts with your content and offers, it will be able to assess out of all the other Facebook users on its platform, which will be most likely to take the action that you want. So to unlock all of this potential, the first thing that we need to do is create our Facebook pixel. So we need to go to settings, data sources, and pixels. Click on the blue add button and enter in your pixel name. Now, it'll be possible for people to see the name of your pixel, so name it logically. When you, can, when you click continue, you will be presented with a couple of options. What you do next will depend on how your website is set up. If you're set up on WordPress, you can embed the pixel code you get from Facebook in the header section of your website. Very often, your WordPress team may have an option to make this easy for you. Now, if that's a little bit technical, you could go with a plugin option. There are two plugins that I work, recommend. The first one is Facebook's own Facebook Pixel plugin. The second one is Pixel Your Site. Now, if you're getting serious about advertising on Facebook, the Pixel Your Site uh, plugin has lots of additional built-in functionality. So if you're using an all-in-one platform or a page builder, very often they will just need your Pixel ID. You can find that by going to Business Manager, Event Manager, and then select your Pixel and copy the Pixel ID from the section on the right-hand side. So once you have the pixel installed, you know, you're going to start feeding data back to Facebook on the actions that people are taking on your site. Now in an upcoming video, I will show you how to set up custom audiences, standard events, and custom conversions, which will really unleash the full potential of the pixel. But if you've come this far with me now, you have a solid foundation to work from, and you will have avoided some killer mistakes that I see people make again and again when it comes to getting started with Business Manager. Okay, so now you know how to set up your Facebook Business Manager, you're probably gonna to want to take a deeper dive into building your email list, building funnel, and how you can get free leads from Facebook ads. So make sure to check out the videos on screen. And if you haven't already done so, make sure that you click that subscribe button, ring the bell, and give me a thumbs up. Oh, and even more importantly, please do scroll down, leave me a comment. Tell me, you know, how you're getting on with your Facebook Business Manager and your Facebook ads. See you in the next video.